Hey everyone, what's up? It's Dr. Charlie Johnson, a physical therapist. Appreciate you checking out my channel. Um, and in this video, I wanted to create a response video or a video to kind of clarify um, something I said in a previous video. You can check out that previous video there. Um, but basically what I did in that video is I tried to help you debunk, um, you know, the idea of exercise needing to take a long time before you see some change, right? There are lots of people out there who are like, hey, you know, like I'm doing this thing, but maybe it's just going to take a while for it to work and I'll just keep sticking with it. And I kind of said, hey, uh, you know, when you're doing movement or exercise um, to resolve your pain, you need to see an immediate change in your symptoms, right? And so again, I've had several people reach out to me and say, hey, Charlie, your logic is flawed or I follow your logic, but um, which but means just you know, everything before it is kind of a race. I'm still not following you, right? Uh, and or my symptoms are chronic. So it's gonna take a long time and, and what you're saying doesn't make sense. And so I wanted to help clarify my logic. If you see me looking up here, it's because I have some notes just to kind of really, I wanted to flush through this uh, idea to help you best understand what I mean, because I think it's really powerful. And so stick around if you're somebody who's been doing something and it hasn't been working uh, and you're looking for a different way of kind of approaching it or thinking about it, because I'm going to drop like a major nugget here uh, shortly. Okay. So that being said, I wanted to clarify my logic, which is that treatment or movement, right? Or something you're doing to resolve your pain should result in an immediate improvement in your symptoms. And so look, one thing you need to understand is that there are essentially three responses, three possible responses to any treatment that you choose to do, right? So either it's going to make you feel same, if we put some numbers to that and we kind of tie in some math, 0% improvement, 0% change, meaning that thing made you no better, all right? Um, you know, it could make you better or it could make you worse, right? And so to be clear, what I'm saying is that if you are no better after a specific treatment, 0% change, then 0% change multiplied times however long you want to stick with a specific treatment. Two days, two weeks, 10 sessions, 100 sessions, 10 years, right? Just equals 0% improvement, right? So if there's no change in the moment, then you have no evidence to believe that multiplying that treatment over time, however long you want to stick with it, will work, right? And if worse, immediately after, and this would be the logic of like, well, it's got to get worse before it gets better or no pain, no gain. Then look, multiplying an immediate worse response over time probably just gets you worse, right? And if better immediately, even if it's just 10%, so what I'm saying is that, you know, you don't need to see, you need to see an immediate better response in treatment. Something needs to make you better immediately in the moment, but it doesn't have to be 100% better. It could just be a base hit. It could be 10% better. Then at the very minimum, this gives you credible proof or evidence that the treatment you just performed in the moment not only worked, but that with continued repetition could amplify the results via the compound effect of time in the better direction. Okay. Now look, to help you better understand sort of the logic that I presented again in that prior video and what I'm talking about today, right? Um, and help you kind of get clear on what I was saying, we need to define a few things so that we're talking kind of the same language, okay? So first thing you need to do to understand this idea of like, Charlie, how are you saying if I do this thing, it should make me immediately better, at least to some extent? Well, the first thing you need to do is you need to objectify your pain experience. So you need to define what you're measuring. You need to set your target. If you don't have a target, then you can't really aim. You don't know what to uh, aim for. So you need to identify what you're trying to improve and really get clear on that. So you want to quantify your pain experience in the way you can see and feel. And the way that I do this is by teaching people how to self-assess so they're not relying upon other people, all right? So let's just say, for example, let's put this into something tangible for you, all right? Let's just say, for example, you've got a pain in your shoulder, all right? And, you know, you've been told you have a rotator cuff tear or bursitis or tendonitis, right? Well, trying to improve that diagnosis, this is why I'm not a huge fan of diagnosis, trying to improve that tear, or that bursitis or tendonitis is useless to you, 100%. For the surgeon, it makes sense, right? That the diagnosis is the target and that going in there and trying to stitch it up or fix it, right, is the intent of treatment. But you're not a surgeon, right? For you, it's nebulous because you have no way of measuring the direct improvement of, right, and or targeting that diagnosis specific specifically, right? You, you don't have an MRI machine where you can do something and the next day see if, you know, things got retethered or not, or if the bursitis went down or up, right? And again, motion is nonspecific. So you can't just move your shoulder and only move the rotator cuff. You're moving many things, the skin, the nerves, the neck, everything, right? So instead, 
right? The first thing you need to do in order to objectify your pain experience is translate what you've been told is wrong with you, your diagnosis or the reason for why you hurt into something that is of common language, that is native to you, something you can understand. Because otherwise it's just too theoretical, right? You can't understand or grab onto it. And because of this, right, it's disempowering. So it's like, hey, what power do you have to improve your leg length discrepancy or your rotator cuff tear? Or as somebody who helps people with unresolved back button sciatic problems all over the world, what power do you have to improve your disc extrusion right now? None, right? So some of this stuff that you're told is wrong with you. You can't even pronounce a spondylolisthesis. What the heck is that? You can't even pronounce it, let alone try to improve it, right? It's too foreign to you. It's speaking a different language. So you've got to translate things that you're told are wrong with you into something you can understand, something you can see and feel, your native language, if you will. And what do I mean by this? How you're moving, right? So what can you do better than anyone else? Move your own body and understand what you, what you feel and you can see it. All right. So for example, let's just say you're told you have, again, um, maybe some type of bursitis or rotator cuff problem or some diagnosis. I'm using a shoulder. It could be anything down below. It's just easy for video sake. All right. So it's like, okay, great. So I have a rotator cuff tear. Uh, what do you do about it? Is the question you should have, right? And you'd be like, well, I'm not really sure. It's not really clear. Like there's this thing, but recognize that that thing exists outside of you because it's on an x-ray or MRI. It's over here. So it's very intangible, you can't really connect with it. You hear what they're saying, but it's hard to objectify. It doesn't really make sense, right? And you might say like, I can't fix a rotator cuff tear, I'm not a doctor, or even better yet, I'm not a surgeon. You're absolutely right. Only surgeons can fix those things. So if you subscribe to that belief, right, you're gonna be a little bit lost and get stuck. But now let's just say you have trouble lifting your arm overhead got the rotator cuff tear, but it doesn't really make sense. We don't resonate with it because we're not surgeons. We can't really fix it, but I can't lift this arm overhead. And when I get to about here, it's like a five out of 10 pain. Hmm. Now that's something you can see about here and feel objectified. You can understand and sort of quantify it for yourself. You don't need somebody else to do that. Now you're in power. All right. So you can use a simple movement exam. This is why I love using motion as part of the rehab solution, if you will, movement as medicine. You can use a simple movement exam to identify what movements or things you're having trouble doing, and then you can objectify what you feel and how well you can do those things. So in the shoulder example, trouble raising arm overhead. Ouch, five out of 10, right around this area. Great. Now, after you've objectified your pain experience, into a language you can understand how your body's moving, something you can see and feel, right? Now you know what you need to improve. And this shifts your focus from trying to fix your rotator cuff tear or your, you know, whatever your disc problem or SI joint problem into something more tangible. Now I remove that diagnostic kind of barrier, that which I don't understand. And now I'm like, oh, okay, regardless of what it is, I have to fix my arm raise overhead. That's it, all right? So the next thing you need to do is you need to define the outcome. Meaning with the target of your treatment now clear, what you're trying to improve, right? The goal of treatment becomes clear. So you want to improve your yucky arm raise from a five out of 10 to something better. You wanna make it move better or feel better, right? Either you wanna improve the range of motion or you wanna reduce the pain or both. So now the experiment is set and we can kind of have a, you know, a logical conversation around the decision-making framework and logic that I talked about in the prior video about how when you do something, you should see an immediate change, right? So when using exercise for pain relief, again, I'm gonna state it again, you should see immediate improvement. Immediate improvement in what? Your yucky arm raise or something you can quantify there. So let's make this super clear, all right? Let's tie in the three possible treatment responses, all right? So let's just say A, B, or C sort of situations could come from any possible treatment. So situation A, if it hurts to raise your arm overhead, five out of 10, ugh, you get treatment, whatever that is, right? And then you raise your arm overhead and it's ugh, five out of 10, no change, 0% better. Scenario number B or scenario B, not number B, right? If it hurts to raise your arm overhead, five out of 10, ugh, you get treatment. Now you raise your arm overhead and you go, oh, seven out of 10, yucky. It's 20% change in the wrong direction. Scenario C. 
If it hurts to raise your arm overhead, five out of 10 pain, ugh, you get treatment. And now you raise your arm overhead and you're like, huh, three out of 10. 20% change in the better direction. Now, let me ask you this. Which treatment worked? Scenario A, where you had 0% change. Scenario B, where it was 20% worse, 7 out of 10 pain. Or scenario C, where it went from 5 out of 10 to 3 out of 10, and maybe the motion improved. Which treatment worked? And if you were just like not trying to think about it too much, you'd be like, well, of course, treatment C, great. All right, so treatment C made you feel, made you feel better. Now, it didn't make you all better. So notice I didn't say it went from a 5 out of 10 and, and it went to a, a 0 out of, a 10, out of 10, right? That's where the element of time comes in, the compound effect. So here's the nugget, all right? You can listen to this over and over again until it sets in. Time multiplies everything good and bad. But you only want to use time to multiply things that make you better in the moment, not things that result in no change or make you worse. Time multiplies everything good and bad, but you only want to use time to multiply things that make you better in the moment, not things that result in no change or make you worse. So look, I am not saying that it's not possible that something that makes no change now could not somehow make a difference in the future for you, or that something that makes you worse now will not somehow magically improve your condition in the future. What I am saying is that if you do not subscribe to this logic or some logic very similar, which is, by the way, the scientific method of seeing an immediate objective change in the moment, then what evidence do you have to believe that that treatment will eventually work with time? You have none. It didn't help now. You have no evidence to believe it will help in the future. And if you have none, then why continue? So any belief that a treatment which makes no change now will make you better in the future is fabricated. It's based off assumption and it does not exist in reality. It's a theory. You're guessing. It's trial and error. So don't guess, test. You've got past, present, and future. So to end it, I wanna say this. What has happened in the past has happened in the past. What will happen in the future is unknown. You don't know it, I don't know it. Therefore, the only way forward and the only thing that makes logical sense is to observe what you can in the present. And therefore, the only way to have credible evidence to believe that a treatment will help you is to see a change in the present, in the moment. All right, so hopefully this is useful. Take the nuggets and apply them. Be scientific. Test, don't guess. And again, hopefully this helps you understand the framework through which this approach makes sense and works. We're talking about exercise or movement, using movement as medicine. We wanna see an immediate change. And if you don't see an immediate change in the mo moment, then it's just speculation that it'll work in the future. All right, hopefully this is helpful and clear some things up. Let me know your thoughts. Thanks everyone. And if you like this video, like and or subscribe below. If you want, right, the next logical question is like, okay, Charlie, so I got the idea and you can take that and run with it, but like, how do I know specifically what to do what tests to run and how to be scientific about it with more clarity, right? If you want help, I'd love to see if I can help you out. Um, you can apply below to work with me. Literally, you can just hit the apply uh, link. It'll take you to an application. You fill out a couple questions um, and then uh, schedule a time to chat. Thanks so much, everyone. Again, this is Dr. Charlie and hope to chat soon.